All right, so the final composite project consists of a couple of new challenges, reflections and drop shadows. So when you're done with this project, you'll have created the world's tallest giraffe. So let me show you what we're going to create. Here is the original image that you're going to work with. And when you're done, you're gonna add a couple of photos and boom, this is the final artwork. How cool is that? I love it. So let's go ahead and get started by opening up this image, which is in your section six folder. And let's go ahead and grab the other two files here, the clouds and the giraffe, and go ahead and add that as well. And let's go ahead and turn these layers off for now. All right, so we have a lot of steps to cover and we're gonna start off with the foreground by making a selection of the sky. And when I did this project initially, I used the fuzzy select tool. So go ahead and use whatever selection tool you wanna use to make a selection of the sky and go ahead and get that done. All right, with the quick mask mode here, I'm gonna go ahead and refine my selection if needed, looks like I did a pretty good job. I need to clean up a little bit here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that next. The other thing I wanna do now, real quick, if you're wondering how I'm navigating around, if you hold your space bar key, you'll get the hand tool and then you can move around the canvas as needed. Now, the one thing I wanna do is I want to adjust this peak right here because we're going to make this canvas taller. And when we do, we'll end up with a flat top for this mountain peak, and that's not what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and come in here and adjust it by creating a slope like that. All right, so once you have your selection, go ahead and invert it and apply a layer mask via the selection option, and boom, the sky is gone. All right, let's increase our canvas size now by going up to image, canvas size, and for the height, we're gonna type in 3500. And once you click your tab key, make sure you adjust your position of your image to the bottom of the new canvas. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom all the way out with command or control, shift plus J. And now we have room for our cloud and our giraffe. So let's work on our clouds next. Let's turn that layer on and let's go ahead and move it behind the foreground. Now, right now, the image layer is way too large. If I zoom all the way out here, Let's see if I go up to view, show layer boundary. So this is the size of that layer right now. And I want it to be closer to what we have for our canvas. So I'm gonna go ahead and resize that by going up to layer and selecting scale layer. So I'm just gonna do a little bit wider than the canvas right now. So I don't have to worry about getting it perfectly aligned along the edge of the canvas there. So. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and move it up with my move tool. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that layer boundary again, because it's kind of annoying. All right, so two things we have to do with the clouds now is we need to create a reflection in the water since we have a new set of clouds and we need to create our atmospheric condition that we learned how to do in a previous tutorial. So let's go ahead and do the reflection first. We're going to duplicate this and call it clouds reflection and it should be above the foreground since we need it in the water. So let's go ahead and go up to layer, transform and select flip vertically. And then with your move tool, you can go ahead and move this down into position. So I think I'm gonna go right about here. Now let's go ahead and grab our new mode, which is going to be overlay. All right, so that looks like it's in the water now. That looks pretty good. We just need to clean up now because we have this part of the sky overlapping the mountain and it shouldn't be. So we're gonna grab a white layer mask and then with a black paintbrush, we can go ahead and remove that part of the sky. I also wanna clean it up on the steps here. I don't necessarily want to remove it completely because the steps look like they are white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my opacity as soon as I get it off the legs here of our subject. So I'm gonna go a little bit smaller here so I can get it in nice and tight. Clean all of this up and I need to fix this again. All right, I'm gonna go with a lower opacity brush this time so I can paint with gray and remove some of that from the steps. 
All right, next is the atmospheric condition. This is optional. It's something that I like to do, but it's entirely up to you. So if you don't remember how to do this, let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer called atmospheric condition background. I'm gonna fill it with transparency. And then I want to fill it with white. So let's grab our bucket fill tool and fill in that layer. And we're gonna move it all the way to the bottom. Let's grab our clouds layer here and let's apply a white layer mask. Now with our bucket fill tool, we can go ahead and apply that condition. So I'm gonna set my foreground color to black and my background color to white. So make sure it's pure white and pure black. I'm gonna click right here and drag down. It looks like it's reversed. So I need to either adjust the line here or in the tool options, I can click on this little icon right here to reverse it. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down below this peak right here. And I'm gonna drag this down just a little bit more. Perfect. Okay, enter or return to apply that. And you can now see there's some gray right here that is removing that part of the sky and letting the background show through, which is the white, which creates that atmospheric condition. And yes, you probably already know that since you learned about it previously. All right, so the clouds are done. Let's go ahead and work on our giraffe now. Let's go ahead and resize him. Let's go to layer, scale layer, and same thing. I'm gonna do 1620 for the width and we have 2446, so click scale. We just wanna make sure that we have the correct layer selected. I still have my clouds, so I'm gonna go back to giraffe here and layer, scale layer, and 1620, 2439, click scale. All right, let's go ahead and move him up into position here. Let's go ahead and drop the opacity so we can see where he is in relation to the rest of the image. And I want him to look the other way. So I'm gonna go up to layer, transform and select flip horizontally. And that's the direction I want him to look in. And I think I have the position exactly where I want it. All right, so I did a pretty good job there. Let's go ahead and put that opacity all the way back up because now we need to get rid of the sky. A lot easier this time since it's a solid blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my selection here and apply my layer mask. This time I'm gonna click invert mask and select selection and that will invert the selection so we don't have to go up to colors and invert it up there. Now we need to place this layer below the foreground so that he's behind the mountain now. And I'm gonna let you do some fine tuning of your mask here. So you can get rid of all this blue and white along his mane right here. And then you're gonna go in with a teeny tiny brush in between the, his hairs here where the light is shining through. I'm not gonna do that because it's gonna take a few minutes. All you have to do is grab your paintbrush tool and paint with black to begin removing it. Now what I did originally is I did lower the opacity and I did multiple strokes along the mane to get rid of that, to try and keep as many of those hairs as possible without losing the overall shape of the mane. So you're gonna have to spend a little bit more time on that to get it just right. Now it looks like I have a little boo-boo or bobo or whatever right here. And I think that is the foreground. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that and get rid of that. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom all the way out. And now we need to work on a few different things. We need to add a reflection in the water because he's behind the mountains now and he's kind of peeking over the mountains. So his reflection should be there, plus a drop shadow on this side of the mountain. Then we need to create some depth by reducing the contrast in the image because the further away a subject is from you, the less contrast it will have in most cases anyways. Now for this particular image, it's a little bit harder because the lighting is pretty harsh. We have some strong sunlight coming from over here. And then if you take a look at the mountain here, we have a strong hard edge shadow here. And then we have the same thing on the giraffe as well. So we don't wanna reduce the contrast too much, but enough to where it looks like he's further away from us than he currently appears. So a lot of things to do. Let's start off with the reflection first. So let's grab our giraffe layer here. We're going to duplicate it, right click and select apply layer mask. Let's go up to layer, transform and flip vertically. 
And then with your move tool, you're going to go ahead and move them down into position. We also need to get that layer above the foreground since he's going to be on top of the water now. Now all this blue is the sky, but you don't really have to worry about that too much because we're going to get rid of that with a layer mask in just a second. I'm just going to go ahead and position him where I think he should be. Now he's directly behind the mountain and he's kind of peeking over. So how far down you go depends on where you think he is in relation to the mountain. If you take a look at this peak right here, that reflection is all the way down here. So I think it should be in that same general area. So I'm going to go right there. Let's go ahead and apply a white layer mask and clean up the sky. Actually, I need to go back because I had invert turned on. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off and redo it. And now we're going to get rid of the sky along the edges and the bottom here with your paintbrush tool. All right, let's change the blending mode to overlay to help that blend in. And let's go ahead and drop the opacity down as well. And that's going to definitely help blend it in some more. Now, the one thing I want to do here is zoom in because I don't think this part of the draft should be on the steps at all. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that out. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to blend in this reflection a little bit more so it matches the water. What do I mean by that? Well, if you take a closer look at the water, you can see there's some ripples happening in the water. So there's some motion in the water. We need to apply that motion to the giraffe reflection as well so it better matches what's going on with the water itself. So to do that, we're first going to duplicate the layer and then we're going to apply the layer mask. And let's turn this layer off because we don't need both of them. And then we're going to go up to filters, blur, motion blur or linear motion blur. And we're going to match the angle of the ripples to match the angle of the water. So right now it's left to right or right to left, which is what we have for the angle right now. If you're working on another project and you need to change the angle, there's a little arrow right here. Just click and drag it to match the angle of the waves. And then you just need to adjust the length to match the intensity of those ripples. So anywhere from 10 to 15 or 18 for this particular image, I think would work. I think I used 18 originally, so I'm going to go with right around 18. So that's a little bit too much. So I'm going to come down just a little and go with that. Now we have another problem. If we take a look over here, the giraffe is now outside of the water. So we don't need this part of the giraffe on the mountain, but we are going to use that for the drop shadow. But first I want to clean up this part of the giraffe layer so it's not outside of the mountain range. So we're going to go back to a white layer mask and clean it up once again. All right, let's go ahead and duplicate this layer. We're going to go ahead and turn this layer off just for a moment because what we need to do with this layer mask now is get rid of this part of the layer or the reflection part of it on the layer mask. So cleaning up once again and then we'll be left with just what we need for the drop shadow. OK, let's go ahead and apply that layer mask. I'm going to call this drop shadow and let's call this one reflection. Let's go ahead and turn that back on before we forget. And I'm just going to scroll up here so I can take a look at my drop shadow. We do need to make some adjustments to it. Make sure you have the drop shadow layer selected. And let's go ahead and darken up that layer. I'm going to go up to colors and I'm going to go with levels. And I'm going to bring the black point all the way over to the right here. And that's going to darken it up. And then we need to blur it out a little bit so that the edges are softer and it will definitely soften up the rest of it so it looks more like a drop shadow. So we're going to go up to filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and then increase this to around 10 to 20 or whatever you think looks good. Now, as we're doing this, as we're increasing the amount of the blur, it's starting to go on the outside of the mountain range here. So we need to go back in and clean that up once again with another white layer mask. Now, I would spend a little bit more time on this than I am right now. So you're going to need to spend a little bit more time to fine tune everything so it looks really good. I'm kind of making a mess here, trying to go through this as quickly as possible so we're not here all day. And you're going to notice that the blue in my mane here 
And I also have a blue outline here and under his chin and his mouth. That's actually going to show up in the reflection, which you can see right here, which is another reason why you want to clean up before you start doing all these extra layers so you're not spending more time fixing this up after the fact. All right, we now have our drop shadow and now we need to work on the perception that the giraffe is farther from us than what it currently appears to be. And we also need to make an adjustment to the mountain range as well because I want those to look like they're further away as well. So let's go ahead and start with the foreground. Let's grab our foreground layer here and duplicate it. Let's go ahead and apply the layer mask. And now we're going to apply the effect by going up to colors and selecting levels. So to create this effect that the mountains are further from us, we're going to reduce the contrast or in this case, reduce the amount of tonal ranges from zero to 255 to 35 to 40 to 255. So if we adjust the output levels, this will decrease the tonal ranges in the image and you will notice that the image becomes brighter or has less contrast the further to the right you go. That's too much. So I'm going to go maybe right around 25 to 30. I think I'll go with 30. And then we're going to go ahead and apply a white layer mask again. So we can add back the contrast in this part of the image with our gradient tool, which is going to give that illusion that there is more distance or more depth in the actual image than there really is. So with your gradient tool, make sure you have pure black set to the foreground and pure white for the background. Otherwise, you're going to have some transparency in other parts of the image. I think we've talked about that before. So I'm going to go ahead and click and drag down here and you'll notice that this part of the image is getting darker. I'm going to go ahead and move this line up to shorten that distance so it's more on the mountain area or the mountain ranges here and less so on the water. I'm going to go ahead and click enter or return to apply that gradient. Now we need to do the same thing to our giraffe. So let's grab the giraffe layer, duplicate it, right click and apply the layer mask and then the same steps as before. So back to colors, levels, and I'm going to adjust this until I think it matches the mountain range. And you can see already it's starting to give the illusion that that giraffe is actually further away than it is if the level is at zero. So I think I'm going to increase this to right around 27 to 28. I think that matches the mountain range pretty good. If you want the giraffe to be further away from the mountains, then you're going to apply this level further to the right. The only problem is I think if he's back that far, you're not going to see the reflection as much because most of his body and his head here are going to be cut off from the mountain pass and then you'd have to move your reflection here up higher so that it's not covering as much as it is right now. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this down to around 27 to 28 and that creates that part of the illusion. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to do some white balance adjustments on the giraffe because if you zoom in you'll notice that this side of the giraffe is pretty blue, especially in his eyes and his ears right here. And we have a setting sun and it's very warm compared to what we see on this side. Now this side will be more blue or less yellow because it is further away from the sun. Just like in the mountain ranges here, this is more blue. Now I do have some problems with some ghosting from the sky in a previous layer right here. So again, that's why you have to spend a little bit more time getting things right from the beginning so you're not going back and making corrections like I am right now or will have to. But anyways, let's go ahead and do our white balance adjustment on our giraffe here by warming him up. So we're going to go up to colors and selecting color temperature and then we're going to adjust the intended temperature to the right and that will make the giraffe much warmer than he is right now. So you can definitely see a huge improvement by adjusting that to around 8800. So you can go more or less depending on your personal preference. All right, so there's one more thing I want to do to the white balance or the color of the image or the draft, I should say, and that is to tone down these blue colors here. And we're going to do that by duplicating this layer. And then we're going to go into hue and saturation 
and drop the saturation down to remove that. Then we're going to go ahead and apply a black layer mask and then paint in those areas to apply that previous edit. All right, so we only have two more steps left. And next, I want to create the illusion that the giraffe is inside of the clouds, not in front of them. Let's go ahead and create a new layer group and place all our giraffe layers inside of it. Let's go ahead and duplicate that grouped layer and turn off the original. Right click and select Merge Layer Group. Now, do you have any idea how we can create the illusion that he's in the clouds? Well, if you said a layer mask, you are correct. Let's go ahead and add a white layer mask. And then we're going to paint with black to begin revealing the clouds. But you want to make sure that you have your opacity set pretty low, under 50 or so. And then a fairly large brush to cover more area. And then the hardness, I would do under 50. So the default is 50. I'm going to go with 25, which is going to create a softer edged brush, which will help blend everything together much better. And then you can begin clicking and dragging out to create the illusion that the clouds are coming through. How cool is that? I love it. May want a little bit up here on top as well and maybe around his ear. All right, so the last thing we need to do is we need to match the color of light between the three images. Each of the images were captured at a different time of day and possibly a different season, which means the color of light is different for each of them. So to create some color harmony, we're going to create a new layer and fill it in with a color. So I'm going to call this color grading. I'm going to fill it with transparency and then I'm going to choose the color that I want to be dominant throughout the entire image. And what I want is this orange pink color right here. So I'm going to grab my eyedropper tool and I'm going to go ahead and try and find a color that I like. Actually, I like that. So here is the hexadecimal number that I'm going to use. Go ahead and grab your bucket fill tool and fill it in. And all right, let's go ahead and blend it in. Not quite done yet. Let's try overlay. Nope, that's not going to work. Soft light. Actually, soft light or overlay, I think would work. What we need to do is tone it down by dropping the opacity. So just like that, we now have that color throughout the entire image and the colors are now in harmony from one image to the other.